Hello, gorgeous. Today is a very special podcast because it is not just the three amigas. No, it isn't. Amiga and amigo. But I have Stasi. This is very exciting. Let me just say, I fucking live for this setup. I feel like I'm on the morning show right now. Like I'm in an audition, but I feel oddly comfortable. That's good. Right? It's like a good kind of casting no, I, couch. It's a like good- an actual one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh-uh. I love it. I love it. I love it too. Did you like, I did like the Versailles with your photo. I know you didn't for do that. Questions. Jessica did no, that. No, I did that. <laughs> you photoshopped it? I did that. Are you joking? I swear to God. Lala, I'm, that, that's going to bring tears to my eyes. I, well, you're I was so, so special. Impressed. No, like that made me feel so good. I reposted it and I was like, oh my God, the art. Like <laughs> Versailles and then like me and my like yellow big bird loofah dress. Like yes. I loved that dress. <laughs> I trolled your Instagram and I was like, what photo would she look best in being placed at Versailles? And that's the one I chose. I can't believe you know how to Photoshop. Is it that hard? Yeah, it's like, Lala, you didn't even have Venmo like (laughs) four months ago. (laughs) Which, by the way, didn't realize how annoying it was when someone didn't have Venmo. No shit. (laughs) Literally, every time we went to dinner and I'm like, this fucking bitch, she's so lucky she doesn't drink because it doesn't even matter. I'm like, you only had like one entree. I don't care. You know what I mean? But if you were to be drinking... Yeah. And contributing to the alcohol cost and you didn't have Venmo, I would have cut you out as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, agree dang, with maybe that I should have though. not gotten it because then I'd just be like balling on free meals no. with Stoss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Venmo, I finally got it. I learned how to Photoshop somewhat. No, all you do is like screenshot the photo and then like hold the actual person in the photo and it copies it and then you just paste it. You uh, know what I'm talking about? Nope. I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, show me. No, it's so good. Um, People went insane when I told them that you were coming on the podcast. I literally have not had you on. I don't think since the very first episode of this podcast. Since um, I was pregnant. The three of us, me, you, and Brett. Yeah. I only come on this podcast. You only ask me on when I'm pregnant. (laughs) Well, I feel like you've been pregnant kind of a lot in the past couple years. It does feel like that. And in all fairness, no, like I, there was a long time where I was like, I'm not doing podcasts. So like, it feels good to be back with you. Asking you to do my podcast was like asking Beyonce. <laughs> no, for real. Oh my God. This is the first official studio, in-studio interview Lala's had. Really? Mm-hmm. Where have you been doing your interview? Oh yeah, their table. The, the table. Yeah, no, the but the table. Yeah, but the table is so cute. It was great, but this is much better. Honored to be first. Honored to be in the same breath as Beyonce right now. But always, like, yeah. All hail. <laughs> um. Okay, so you're pregnant again. I think you're carrying different this time around. Duh. <laughs> I'm surprised your shoes fit. No, for real, you guys. When I was pregnant with Hartford, within the first, I think it was week sixteen. I started to swell and I couldn't fit into any of my shoes. It was also COVID, okay? So I didn't leave my house. I just sat around watching the Great British Bake Off show, baking all day and eating what I baked all day. So like, Mm -hmm. yes, I am carrying differently (laughs) this time around. You think you ate more during that time than now? Yes. Really? Lala, baked (laughs) goods morning, noon, and night. You did bake a lot. Yes. (laughs) A lot of people did in COVID. That's all I had to live for. Cupcakes. I remember (laughs) we went on a trip. Where where did we go? Lake Havasu. No, I think it was Lake Mead. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was something. They're all the the same. (laughs) They're all the same. And Stassi fitting her little sausage feet into (laughs) Chanel's. I was like... I think we ought to give them up, girl. <laughs> I think it's time. No, it was sad. It was definitely, you know, like those images of Kim Kardashian when she was pregnant and her feet are like bubbling out of her her heels. That That's what that was. I also think that women carry differently with girls. I think that actually you looked like a goddess. So like this theory doesn't make any sense. But like when you're pregnant with a girl, you get fugly. But like when you're pregnant with a boy, they don't steal your beauty. Oh, so many people have written me that that I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now that makes me so nervous because I don't know. Like, I I felt like I got, I didn't gain much weight with Ocean, but she was also small in the tummy. She came three weeks early. But I wouldn't know if I was 
fugly or not because it was COVID. I was in sweatpants and there was no reason to get ready or put makeup on. Like, that's got to be fun this time around because you can, like, actually get ready. No, you have no idea. This whole experience has been so different. Like, I was scared at first and apprehensive to get to try and get pregnant again because I associate it with just, like, being stuck at home feeling depressed, yeah. baking, not like not putting on clothes, just wearing sweatpants, all those things. And I'm like, I can't do that to myself again. And then I kind of had to be reminded that, okay, well, life's not like that. And so this time I'm like, what can, what, mo- how do I fill my days? How do I jam pack them as much as possible? Like I, even if I'm at home, I put on a cute outfit. I do my hair and my makeup. I just, it's so different. Everything about it is so different. Just wait until you get pregnant again and you're able to just leave your house and and film or just record your, just, it's so much more fun. I believe that. I've started saving images of like Rihanna because (laughs) she's my pregnancy fashion inspo. Like I can't wait to just like wear bikini tops out to Craig's with like unbuttoned jeans. You're going to kill it. I want to kill it. You will. I'm so jealous of you. Why? Because... For me, there's not many relationships that are in. I've seen successful relationships like with my mom and dad, with my older brother. But within the friend group, there's (laughs) not many relationships that I look at and go, I want that. That's so nice, Lala. Well, it's true. And I I talked to you about this on your podcast. But just the way that you and Bo parent Hartford, the relationship that the two of you have, you can just tell that you enjoy each other so, so much. And I'm wondering how you find that balance of like, how am I a good wife? You obviously are a working mom and then you're a mom. So how do you find the balance? And I hate when people ask me this question, Mm -hmm. but people are going crazy and want to know like how you maintain everything being. And when, and when it's not so great, What does that look like? Well, I'll tell you what I'm failing at right now. And I've noticed that I've failed at it for like a a good chunk of time. I feel like over a year. (laughs) I'm like failing in the friendship area of my life. Like I don't feel like I don't keep in touch with people very, very well. Because I'm like, I'm there's so much I personally feel like is on my plate just being a mom and working and being a wife that like I don't know how to also give myself to my friends the way that I used to and I notice that and I don't like that about myself but also it's like you can't have it all like sometimes in life like other things are going to suffer because you're focusing on something else and I try to not expect in return from my friends too much because I'm not able to give it so like Let's that part of my life I recognize is like is suffering. Like I could be better, you know. Okay. But I also feel like I'm not that great of a wife. Like I could totally have sex with Bo way much way more. <laughs> <laughs> like truly, I could. I think that all of the things like we both respect each other so much and we're both best friends and so we like the day to day of our lives like it works so well. Because I think that respect is there and that friendship. But I could be better at making him feel wanted. But, like, I'm tired all the time. Well, you're, like, <laughs> 100 months pregnant. But I feel, I know. I just feel guilty because he does such a good job of making me feel wanted. Yeah. That, like, I've recognized that, like, I don't do that. So, so while you look at us and say that, I'm slacking. Like, I can see that I'm slacking. But I feel that it's not even about, like, I'm looking at just Instagram and going, it's not real life. Like, I think you have been totally open and honest with me about the pieces that sometimes are lacking. Yeah. And it just feels like a very healthy relationship. Like, obviously, it's not going to be perfect all the time. And there are things that you could do differently and better. But I feel like the way that you and Bo handle that is, like... The coolest part. Well, the difference between like this relationship and anything else I've ever experienced before, it's like three things. One is just like there is that respect for each other. I respect him so much and I know he respects me. So like that informs everything that I do. Yeah. What was those fuck those three things? I literally (laughs) like what was the two other things? The pregnant you have pregnancy brain right now and voice. The (laughs) the respect part of it, the um Oh, the fact that we put each other first, sometimes before Hartford, because we feel like if that foundation isn't there, then like, how are we going to be there 
for her. So, like, I know that's, like, controversial to say, like, you should always put your kid first. But sometimes, no. Because, no. <laughs> because I feel like we both know that, like, if we're not cool, then how are we going to be cool for our kids? 100%. So at least we're on the same page there. Okay. And then the third thing is the way that we parent. It's like we both, it's not a competition of, like, who's doing better or who's, like, had to work harder. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like so much of the time I've seen couples that they're like, well, I did this all day or I was with the baby all day or, like, blah, 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 that we don't do that. It's like if I see that, like, he's struggling or, like, needs a nap or something, it's like, okay, tap out. Like, I'll do it. I don't mind. It, it's There's no competition. So I it, love that. It mm-hmm. feels like a partnership. And those are, like, the three things that I feel like has, like, really worked for us. Yeah. No, that – and you saying that you – so I – learned that if you go into couples therapy, they always say that the relationship always comes before the child. Really? Because Yes. Because yeah. without a healthy relationship, you don't have a healthy home for your child. Yeah. Right? So if you're constantly making sure that the kid is good, but you and your co-parent or partner are not— then that fucks up the entire dynamic of the home, I right? Mean, I agree. With, that's how I feel because, like, think about it. Like, when you're in a fight or an argument with your partner, like, oh, my God, if Bo and I are fighting, like, I'm so testy with Hartford. Mm-hmm. And, like, my my I have a short fuse and I'm just irritated. And then, like, the energy in the vibe in the house is thick. And so, like, that's not what I want for my kids. No, and that's more toxic having that type of situation to parents – in the same home who aren't getting along than two parents who decide let's go our separate ways. And yes, the child will be bounced back and forth, but at least they're being bounced back and forth to healthy homes. Fully agree. Lala, my parents divorced when I was what, four or five and I have zero trauma from that. I, all I have are like happy memories of just like, yeah, two happy homes. And my parents then were friends. And, totally. And like, I never really saw f- of course you should see fighting like you should see realistically like what a relationship is going to be like but it was never anything that I'm like oh this was like a dark place to live in like it scarred you it it didn't do that no yeah I think watching parents like have an argument and then seeing how they come out of it is definitely important I mean I feel like that's kind of what we were exposed to no I feel like you should watch your parents argue and then make up because it it feels like you can stand up for yourself and it won't ruin a relationship Mm, excuse me, it won't ruin a relationship. Totally. Right. So, yeah. No, no I, I think it's I really good to agree. See. Do you know what it seems like, too, just that I'm noticing with you? I feel like you make conscious efforts. And I say that because uh, you just had mentioned you wake up and get ready every day. Like, for me, that is such a conscious decision. Even in, like, your appearance, you're like, I feel better about myself. I'm going to wake up and get ready every day. Now with your relationship, I feel like you're probably the type of person who makes a conscious effort. Like maybe I'm I'm not doing this. I'm going to make an effort, a conscious effort to do that. And I was just having that conversation with my boyfriend of seven years with just friendships. I don't know how mothers do it, but I'm like how, juggling friends and my relationship right now. And we just talked about like, okay, maybe I need to put more of a conscious effort into like more time with me and my partner yeah. versus me and my friends. And I feel like you do that. Do you think, do you, are you like conscious about that? And you're like, I need to make these decisions versus it coming naturally or? Now that you say that, I'm like thinking about my, my thinking about like my whole life. Like, <laughs> my eyes. But like, I do spend a lot of time thinking about like what makes me feel good. What makes the energy in like my home good? Like what make, and then I, I make decisions based off that. Like, I know that if I don't do, like, my, my hair and makeup or put on a cute outfit every day, that day is not going to be that great. Like, I'm yeah. going to—I'm just not going to look back on that day and be like, nailed it. Mm-hmm. So, like, I make an effort to do that. And I think I do that with every area of my life. And I, I don't know that, I, that if it came naturally or if it's just something I've been practicing— but I feel you're making me feel so wise right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you I think you that you do take a step back from your reality and and process and see where things need to shift because even in our friendship, you know, you were very vocal to me about things that like were not working and I feel like we had a conversation it was yeah. like 
got on the phone. This is annoying me and I would like to see a change. So I think you're like that even, at least in our friendship. So I can only imagine what it's like when you're at home with Bo or with Hartford. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I am. We're here to build a bitch up. (laughs) Thank you. You're doing great, sweetie. (laughs) Speaking of your relationship, was there anything that you feel after your relationship with that one guy with the man hair, Uh the man bun? Yeah. After that relationship, because that was the last one before you got with Bo, right? Yeah. Did you take a step back from that and say, this is what I'm looking for in a dude, and this is what they have to bring to the table in order for me to to settle down with them? Or did that just kind of happen with Bo? No, I knew. No, I, I knew what because he because man bun made me realize definitely what I don't want. Okay. And man bun made me feel bad about my job, bad about my career. About reality TV? Didn't like reality TV. Didn't like the quirky. I don't think he liked my basic bitchness. He didn't like, there's so many, he wanted to change me. All the time. I just felt like I was constantly having to be somebody that I wasn't with him. And that w- And then also the other thing was that Man Bun never made an effort to be around my friends. So after Man Bun, I was like, I, if I'm going to end up with someone, that person will want to be around my friends and will make an effort with my friends. And he's going to love all the things about me or at least fucking pretend <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like pretend that you like that I'm a basic bitch you know what I mean be my biggest cheerleader and I found those two things in Bo and it was just like something that I had never really or I hadn't felt in a really long time and I think that's also something that makes this relationship work like I never feel like I have to change myself or be something different when I'm with Bo. And you had met Bo a couple times before and like hung out and it was like, no. No, we're... I never, no. Wait, someone, didn't Kristen or someone want to set you guys up and you were like, you met and it was like, no. And then one night you like hooked up or something. Or did I make this up in my head? You're blurring it a little. Okay, but tell me. Kristen and Katie had wanted to set me up with Bo for okay. a while and he didn't want to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the honesty. You're um, blurring it. He didn't like me. He didn't want to know. He, didn't, he saw my Instagram and he was like, no, like, I don't think that this is going to work. And whenever I talk about this to to him now, he's like, obviously, like, I thought you were beautiful and stunning. He's like, I just saw this like blonde, big boobed reality star who probably gets like <laughs> bottle service at clubs and stuff. Like, oh. you know what I mean? Like, just not anything that like would fit in with like my life or would want to be with me like we wouldn't be a good match and so it took a while for him to want to meet me and then when I met him I just won him over with my sparkling personality (laughs) (laughs) Bo's like I guess I can take a break from Barney's beanery and (laughs) Rand's game to hang out with Stoss Literally, though. Nailed it. (laughs) Nailed it. Nailed it. It's such a perfect fit. And I love the two of you next to each other because you got Bo with, like, most of the time a Rams hat on. He loves the Rams. Most of the time. (laughs) All the time. All the fucking time. I've never met him without one. Facts. (laughs) Factual. (laughs) Little button-up shirt, jeans, vans, and then Stassi just in the most basic way, I guess. Decked to the fucking <laughs> nines, and it's the best thing to see. I want that. You will find that. You manifest will find that. that shit. You will. Although talking about your co-parenting and relationship, I'm like, I kind of got that with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> we really got that shit down to a science. <laughs> you really, you really do. Were you? Because I I always tell Lala, I'm like, don't be looking for it, not like you are. And that's when it'll come. Were you ready and looking for a relationship? No. See, that's okay. true. That's that's the thing. I was so loving being single. I was loving dating around. I was loving going on girls trips, doing whatever the fuck I wanted, like shopping all the time. Like I, I always tell my friends who are single, like, enjoy this shit. Right. Because mm. one day you're not going to have it. Like, you get to just live for yourself right now. Mm-hmm. I loved every second of it. So when I did meet Bo, we took it slow because I was in no, I really enjoyed my life the way that it was. So right. I was in no hurry to disrupt it. Yeah, and you, like, loved your your apartment that you were oh, in. Like, yeah, it I was fucking time. loved that apartment. <laughs> you loved it. Loved it. <laughs> but, I mean, your house now... By the way, we talk about, I think about this all the time. I remember coming over to your house Uh and obsessed, right? Gorgeous. I loved all of it. It was totally your vibe. And I was like, 
are you a little worried for like when y'all have kids and you're like, <laughs> well, what we're going to do is once we decide to have kids, we'll probably start looking in the valley <laughs> and put this up for sale. No. <laughs> that did not happen. No. Okay, the market's crazy right now, Lala. I'm going to die in this house. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally. I could think of worse places to die. Yeah, no, I know. And I feel like a brat when I complain about it because I am so in love with my house. So in love with it. But for two children, there's not that much to do. Like, there is no yard. There's so many stairs. It's kind of like a haunted house, the way that it's, like, set up. Like, Bo's closet is in Hartford's room. The baby's not even going to have its own bathroom right now. So, like, it's it's just, it, it you, uh, I, I know. <laughs> no, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. But, like, Ocean has the tiniest closet ever because I was like, you're small. We can fit a lot of clothes in here. And, like, I took over the closet in her bedroom. Hartford, so I guess, yes, Hartford doesn't have a closet. She has an armoire, okay? <laughs> That's all she needs. That's, That's all she needs. needs. Right? The clothes are no, so small. That, no, you I had agree. to give up your room of a closet. Yes, I did. Yes, I for did. For the new baby. Is it done? The nursery? No, it's not. And that's it literally, I cry like once a day, pregnancy hormones, because I'm just like, it. nothing's ready. I do not feel prepared. When I was pregnant with Hartford, everything was done within like four, the first four months because COVID baking, I had nothing to fucking do. But this time, I nothing is done. And I feel like if this baby were to come, like, where the fuck would I put him? What would I do? I I don't feel. Do you have a bassinet? I do, but but like nothing else is done. Yeah, it's like you just kind of wing it a little bit more. No, for sure. Are you struggling to lose weight and keep it off? Tired of wasting time and money on starvation diets that lead to more frustration and stress? If there was a weight loss solution that could actually work for you, would you try it? Then head to golo.com. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo. I'm Amber. I've lost 128 pounds with Golo taking release. If you're ready to take back control of your life, head to golo.com now and see how Golo can work for you. That's G-O-L-O.com. My sleep is way better. My inflammation has gone way down. Golo saved my life. I was way overweight. That's what sent me down the path. I wanted to make sure and live for my kid. I have literally tried everything. I was on the verge of getting gastric bypass surgery, and I saw the Golo commercial, and it was the last thing I tried because it worked. Join over 2 million people who have found a better way to lose weight with Golo. Your healthier and happier life begins at Golo.com. That's G-O-L-O.com. Again, G-O-L-O.com. How do you feel about the snail? Hartford hated it, so I'm not doing. I'm not getting it again. I saw the price tag on that, and I was like, "We ain't snooing." Oh no! What are you guys speaking of? What's the snoo? It's supposed to be this miracle crib, so it it moves, so the okay. baby's constantly being rocked, which uh, so many babies like are obsessed Love with it. it. Sleep through the night right away. Hartford did not like it. It was so expensive. We were able to like sell it on Craigslist, but for. Like, a fraction of the price. It's, like, what, a couple thousand dollars? I think it's, like, two thousand dollars. I think we, like, sold it just to get it out of the house. I think, like, three hundred dollars. So, like, Shut lost up. money on it. I would say this. Like, if this baby sucks at sleeping, I would consider renting it to mm -hmm. try it out. But do not buy the snoo, you guys. If I could just give anyone any advice, just don't buy the fucking snoo. I don't think you should buy the snoo either. Unless, and it also has yeah. like, a, like a straight jacket in there. So they're like attached yeah. to it and then it rocks them. <laughs> and then yeah. if they wake up even a little bit, it starts rocking again. But oh. a lot of my friends who used the snoo, their kids are in their bed now. I hear that. In the parents' bed? In beds? the parents' bed. That. Unless the snoo wants to be a sponsor of the podcast, then all moms <laughs> should buy the snoo. <laughs> I'll be snooing my little ass off. <laughs> and I'll give you one, too. <laughs> give you um, people loved us talking about style on your podcast. Yes. The, okay. fir the first thing I want to know is what is one of your least favorite trends that has ever existed? Whether you took it on or not, like, what trend did you hate? Of all the times of trending. Okay. I, I, I won't be able to say, like, my absolute least favorite because I would need to give that days and days of thought. Of course. Okay. So right now, I'm going to say, like, those big, like, big, chunky sandals. I just, like, can't get like down Like Herman with. Munster looking sandals? Yes. They're so masculine. Or, like, even when people wear Birkenstocks or, like, those big slides. Do you hate those worse than the bucket hats? 
Oh, fuck bucket hats. Oh, shit. Never mind. You really Hold called on. me out on two of them. Bucket hats, number one. I'll say bucket hats, number one. No one looks cute. It, it literally takes away from your attractiveness. Like, no one looks good in a bucket hat. So, like, don't do it. Babies, that's it. But even Hartford <laughs> sometimes, like, take the bucket hat off. <laughs> I can't. I showed up to Stassi's one time in a Burberry bucket hat. She did not give a damn. She was like, it's Hideous, take it off. And I did buy some Prada Herman Munster shoes, and I've only worn them one time. Oh, no, no, no. You're talking about the loafers? The mm. loafers? No. Oh, I live for a loafer. No, they're not a loafer. They are the exact sandal that you're talking about. Okay. So bulky. Oh. Okay. And I don't really know what I was thinking I th- when I bought them. I think that everyone who is wearing these big, chunky sandals will all collectively look back at this moment in time and say, what the fuck were we thinking? What do you think it'll be in comparison to? Like, back, like what will be the equivalent from back statement in the day? Statement necklaces. Ugh. The way that I wore them. <laughs> you loved the statement <laughs> necklace. Yes, but I look back and I'm like, what the fuck? Why was I wearing, wearing armor with every outfit? I would literally, to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I don't know what's weirder, though. Is you on a beach or, like, (laughs) a statement necklace on the beach? Yeah, I'm not really, like, a beach girly. Like, I'll go, but... No, Stassi's like, take me somewhere that's frigid and is very old. I'm a city girl. City, yeah. An old city girl. (laughs) So you don't like the chunky... So you're probably not a... What do you think about docks? Do you hate Doc Martens? Doc Martens, the platform, any docks. You hate them? I don't hate them because I think there I, there's a way to style them that I, I think is interesting. Okay. So, like, I just because I'm not wearing them doesn't mean I can't appreciate them on somebody else. Okay. Yeah. I can't picture you in a Doc Martin. No. At no. All. It's, not, it's not me. <laughs> I, you're, like, a delicate. I prefer a feminine shoe. Yes. It makes me feel my best. Like, there are times where I'll go to, like, Bloomingdale's and be like, oh, my gosh, Stoss has not these exact shoes because we know Stoss is like, do not I, buy what I have. No. And then I put them on. <laughs> I put them on and I'm like, I look ridiculous. Really? No. Can you do me a favor and describe your style in three words? Oh my God. So funny that you just asked me this. But I love this. <laughs> because I just had on Allison, uh, what's her last, Born, Bornstein. Okay. Um, okay. She's, she's the one on TikTok who's gone viral who, um, who did... Did the three word method okay. for your style. And I was so excited to have her on my podcast. The episode didn't come out yet. And I've been like, Allison, I've been trying to think of my three words for like a year now. And I like all my words are boring when I hear them together. Cause I was like, classic, chic, polished. I'm like, that's fucking boring. Like all three <laughs> of those together. And then she's like, I'm gonna figure out your words. Oh my and gosh. And she I have went chills. through my closet. Okay. She looked at everything and she's like, I know, I know what it is. She goes, classic is one of them. And she goes, and chic can be one of them. But she's like, your other one is Baroque. What is it? Like Versailles. Okay. Baroque. Uh, Baroque. Like, you know, like the style of Versailles. Yes. That's I'm what like, you're. That is it. And I'm like, that is it. Because she's like, you love like a fluffy f- sleeve. You love jewels on everything. Mm-hmm. Like there's this like element of like Baroqueness to your style, but you still dress pretty classic. I originally thought you said broke, and I was like, oh, hold <laughs> up. <laughs> hold up. <laughs> she may be basic, but shit ain't broke. <laughs> no, it, like, the way that it got me excited, I, I can't, it made my... It, it made my year. It made my year to hear that word. We have your three words. Damn. What are your three words? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, my God. Oh, this will be fun. Wait, I want to know, because you're okay. into this stuff. What would mine be? Okay. I would say sexy or something that has to do with that word. Like, something that... It doesn't have to exactly be that word, but it could be a synonym for it. Okay. Because, like, you, you're a hot person. Like, you dress like a hot person. Thank you. Okay? So, like, that has to be one of your words. I think elevated should be one of your words. <laughs> I'm loving my words. Okay? So, like, mm-hmm. sexy and elevated. And then casual. Bam. That's it. Yeah. Along the same lines. Because, like, like, you don't yeah. dress up. That, I mean, yes, you do dress up. and But even still, when you dress up, it's there's an element of, like, California casualness to Chill. it. Chill. You know? Yeah, that's how I've always been. Like, yes, I want to look good, but above all else, I'm trying to be comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, write those down, and if you, like, want to tweak them, Mm -hmm. go for (laughs) it. Okay, we said sexy. (laughs) Yeah. Casual. Elevated. 
Wow. Because That's you so still good. Always, you still always look put together and elevated. Like you never look like a casual like slob. I think that's because I spend money on my shoes and bags. Oh, that's what that, that's what I say too. Like yeah. I don't spend money on clothes. Like that shit can be from anywhere. Like yeah. but bags and and shoes that's important. What about jewelry? And jewelry. No, I'm big I'm yeah. huge on jewelry. I know. You are always fingers dripping, the neck be dripping. There is nothing that makes me more excited to like put on like in the morning than jewelry over clothes over shoes over purses over makeup over hair like I feel my best when I'm in jewelry I relate to that with my hoops yeah see we all have our things what's the thing <laughs> do you though? own a pair of hoops I you know what I think <laughs> I do because during COVID yeah. hoops were like so big and everywhere and I was like maybe I'm a hoops girly and I bought them I wore them once and I'm like I'm not a hoops girly Okay, can we please do this one night? We're going to dress each other? Yes, we're going out to dinner. I'm dressing you. You're dressing me. We're yeah. going to feel very uncomfortable, but it's okay. Once I get, like, peak hot again, absolutely. Because you're not going to dress me in your sexy, sexy, casual, <laughs> elevated style. No, I want to dress you like she... Rihanna with that bump. <laughs> I would have the best time. Oh, my God. Like, the best accessory. I've, like, never walked out showing my bump ever. Oh, you're missing out. Like, ever. The only time I got to do it was when we went to, I think, Katie's house. And I wore a crop top. And, like, all we did was just sit there. I also think I dyed my hair a little bit pink. <laughs> oh. Didn't you? COVID you was did. a weird time. You did have pink. COVID sucked. COVID was a very <laughs> weird time. It really was. What's the ugliest you've ever felt? Oh, probably, like, now. No, I would go with, like, when with I With or without being pregnant. I want to know the ugliest ever in your lifetime. That you've ever felt. I I genuinely feel ugly pregnant without like my hair, makeup, and clothes. Like this weekend, I've felt me and Hartford have been sick and we didn't leave the house. And like, so I didn't do anything to myself. Yeah. And I truly feel like Quasimodo. <laughs> like, I, I feel like a beast. Like I'm not one of those people that loves being pregnant. I do the best with it. Like I'm, I'm so thankful that I am. So I like try to make the most out of being pregnant. I feel guilty when people message me and they're like, God, you know, you make pregnancy look so easy and so fun. And I love your attitude towards it. I'm like fucking attitude towards it. I hate this shit. <laughs> like I hate this shit. I can't wait to be a hot person again. So like, <gasps> I'm not somebody that loves being pregnant. Yeah. I don't feel good about myself when I'm pregnant. That is so crazy maybe, to me. But maybe postpartum's worse, though. Postpartum's worse. Like, mm. those, like, first couple months after you give birth when your belly's, like, deflated and, like, your thighs are still chafing and you're like, what the fuck is See, life? See, I felt so hot after I dropped Ocean out the That's cookie. That's because... I <laughs> that is because... <laughs> Within three days, you looked exactly how you did pre-pregnancy. It was disgustingly unfair and rude. Rude. That is true. But what if my second... This is what I'm nervous about is the second baby. What if it like... No, you'll be fine. You really? Are, you, I, Lala, you are going to be more than fine. I'm starting to prep my body now. You're never going to have to worry about not being a hot person. Trust. I kind of agree. I, I agree okay, with that. Okay, from Stassi's mouth to fucking God's yes, ears. I'm taking it up with the man you're fine. if that ever changes. You're fine. But do you ever look back at photos of yourself the first time pregnant and be like, I felt so ugly, but look how cute I was. No. Really? <laughs> no. I look back. I do this every night, okay? okay? I look back just to make myself feel better at all, like, the exact week that I was pregnant with Hartford at the week I am, like, currently, so that I can see how much uglier I was than I am right now. Oh, my hell. <laughs> to make myself feel better about where I am right now. <laughs> are you Are you nervous about this second baby coming? <clears throat> Not because it's a second child, but, like, for example, I sit there and with Ocean and, like, in my mind, she couldn't get any cuter, any more perfect. And, like, I think about, okay, when another baby comes into play, like, it's gonna is it going to be as that. cool? Is it going to be as cool as Ocean to where I'm like, okay, I love you just as much? Or am I going to be like, I don't know about this? I'm not worried about that. I'm I'm worried that it's going to, like, totally disrupt all the the things I love about my life right now. Like, I love my life right now. I love our little family. Mm -hmm. And I love like how we handle Hartford. I love how we do things together. And everything that I hear about having a second baby is like, you don't really get to spend time with your partner that much anymore. Cause you're just like 
separated, taking care of one's taking care of each kid. And so I'm mainly worried about like what that will do, how a second child will disrupt our flow. I'm obviously not a parent of two kids, so I'll probably be coming to you for advice. However, I think if you and Bo can really create for the first, I know it sounds like a really long time, but think about it. It flies by Harford's already, what, over two and a half. Mm -hmm. If you can say, okay, for this amount of time, it's going to take maybe a year and a half, two years of where things may be a little bit funky, because then once this baby boy is, you know, old okay. enough, yeah. they're going to be playing together. Totally. And no, I, and that's something that I tell Bo all the time because he gets more stressed out with like Hartford than I do. And I'm like, Bo, this is temporary. Everything that you're feeling right now is temporary. This tantrum is temporary. How she's acting is temporary. When this baby comes, that will be temporary. It like, life's always changing. So like when you feel like getting frustrated, just be like, it's not always going to be like this. That's so crazy that you're the one that's saying those no, things. No, it is so weird that, like, I have, like, this, like, weird amount of patience when it you're comes so to evolved. being a mom. But, like, I don't have patience with anything else. It is crazy because when I see you with Hartford, she could be having a meltdown and Stassi's like, it'll end well, at some point. <laughs> no, but true. And I'm like, I don't want to match her energy and and then all of a sudden, like, be wound up and fucking crazy because then she's going to think that, like, oh, well, that's... That's the norm. No, I'm like, I got to stay calm. It causes anxiety, too, because love my parents to death, but that's what my mom was. She was like, if I got wound up, she got wound up, mm -hmm. and then I grew up with anxiety because of it. Oh, okay. God. So good for you. Okay. Well, you would have had it anyway with I social know. media. <laughs> <laughs> Do you compare Hartford to other kids? Fuck yeah. You're a liar <laughs> if you say that you're not comparing your children. The other day, also, I heard Bo said to Hartford, he goes, Ocean would never do this. <laughs> and I was in the other room. <laughs> and I'm like, we can't do that. Okay, we can say it behind our back. <laughs> not to our face. <laughs> but we cannot ever say that. Wait, what was she doing? Her. What was Hartford doing? I don't know. One of the things, whenever I tell her no, she does the opposite. Like, which I get is a normal thing for toddlers. Like, totally they normal. Test their boundaries, all that stuff. But it was just one of those things. Like, she. She just dis she's disruptive all day long. Okay, so like it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what she was doing this one time. <laughs> but I literally heard Bo in the other room say that, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, we can't say no, that. We say that behind her back, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> like good parents, yeah. we only talk shit behind our kids' backs. Yes, <laughs> not to their faces. No, but with Ocean, if I want her to do something, I have to tell her not to do it. Like I'll be like, because we had to take Santa Claus away. I told you. Yeah. So I'm like, don't you brush your teeth. Don't you brush your teeth. That's actually. And then she was like. <laughs> That's pretty genius. Genius. I would like to try that. I'm going to go home today and be like, you better not fucking eat your dinner, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I can't breathe. Stassi. That You're going to get so many messages from people being like, not Stassi, calling her kid a bitch again. It's Don't like, worry. Everyone I relax. <laughs> It's a joke. Oh. Never to her face. <laughs> Never to her. So many people are asking about your Taylor Swift era's tour experience. Oh, wow. Did you go? No. No, I, I got invited and I was like, I'm good. And now I'm what? kicking myself. I know. I know. I didn't go, but congrats on going. It was um, like one of the best experiences of my life. It would have been mine too. And I was a dumbass and was like, I don't really listen to her music. That would have been a really fun girls thing to do together. Like that, that's actually, that's a bummer. It's a huge bummer. We should bummer. have thought about that, actually. <laughs> do you like Beyonce? Of course. Everyone loves Beyonce. And I hope to get tickets to Beyonce. <laughs> I want to see if you can come on the 4th. It's on the 4th? I'm going on the 4th. It's Beyonce's birthday and I'm going to go for my birthday. What? The 4th of, oh. Of September. Oh, you're giving birth oh. like two days after. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> That's actually really sucky. What if you gave birth at the Beyonce concert? I was literally thinking about that at Taylor Swift <laughs> because I, I was in pain. Wait, I, really? No. I, it was, it's such a long night and you get there early, and then she goes on for so long that I'm like, this is, I am physically hurting so badly, but I'm having so much fun. I mean. You had good seats. No, it was incredible. I went with free people, and like, 
I will be loyal to free people forever and ever until I die. <laughs> like, you went with free people. What a perfect Taylor Swift right? brand, right? To go, to go with. with. I know, and I was like so excited to pick out clothes from their website to wear to Taylor Swift, and then I'm like, I'm pregnant. I can't wear any of this fucking shit. All I could, all I could get was like, okay, I guess this blazer will fit me. Like, fuck, like, whatever. <laughs> was it the most incredible? Because I know that Hartford's a Swifty. Yes, um, but Hartford, are you a Swifty? I uh, so I never know whether I'm allowed to call myself a Swifty or not because, mm. like, I don't know, like, the chance. You know, I don't know all of the like. You know, they, they're they like chants. They have oh, chance. I thought it was just it meant like you liked her or you didn't. No, it's like way serious. And I don't want. That's a religion. I, I, yeah, it, yeah. It feels like it. And like you have to know like all the Easter eggy things and everything about her life. And I don't know that. I just really love her music and okay. I love to play it. And I like her. I like every time I see an interview with her, I'm like, God, she's so fucking likable. Like I'm I root for Taylor Swift always. I, I hope that that makes me a Swifty, but I'm not going to pretend that I'm like some diehard fan that knows everything. In this everything. room, it makes you a Swifty. In right? this room, I feel like I'm a Swifty. You're yeah. a Swifty. Yeah. You're a fan. Like, I don't need you to be like collecting friendship bracelets and knowing the channels. <laughs> all right. Easter That's eggs. when I put you into a I straight jacket. Fr- and go- I, wait, I loved the friendship bracelets. Like, that was so fun. <laughs> yeah, they like exchanged them, right? Yeah. It was really fun. What's Vigilante shit on? I love that one, Midnight's. So, so what I is think, your era? Like what one I'm in what, right now? You, or like, yes, when people ask you, the correct answer would be what? Fearless? No. No, I don't think so. I feel like um, maybe 1989. Oh. That's a great it's just, one. It's just so like boppy and fun. Is and that what Lovers is on or whatever? Or Trouble? Trump? Bad love. I can't, not bad track of, I can't keep track of all the songs that are on each one. But I will say, I do have a new favorite now. Reputation used to be my favorite. Okay. Midnight's for sure. Mm-hmm. After, and after seeing her, like, it's the one with vigilante shit. It's, there's, it, there's just such, like, a wide range of cool music. Right. That I'm like, this is, this is what's fucking up. Like, this is elevated. Okay, I want to become a Swifty. I think I'm going to dedicate the next few months to, like, understanding what it means. I'm going to make the friendship bracelets or whatever. Like, I don't have that much going on. I can fit that into my schedule. You have the most going on. I do? You, yes. And yet my mind, people I know. (laughs) And yet my mind can still talk me into a dark hole. So clearly there is enough time for me to do something different. What do you mean? Well, if I'm, like, very busy, but yet my mind can still go to, like, strange places about, like, oh, my God, what is my life going to turn out to be, then we need to figure out something that's productive to place in to those moments so that the mind doesn't venture. The mind needs no time to venture right now. Okay. What you time get what of, I mean? Yeah, what time of day is your mind venturing? Nighttime. Once I put the kid to bed. Okay. You should start watching, like, Outlander or something. <laughs> I've been watching Desperate Housewives, actually. Okay. like the, A rewatch. Not the Desperate Housewives. Not Sorry. The, what oh, did I say? You said Desperate Housewives? Desperate Housewives so the, on two melatonin. So not, <laughs> not real Housewives. No. I want to know if you can tell me, would you, two things. The first thing I want to talk about is would you ever do reality TV again? Because when I see you, I'm like, this bitch has it figured out. Go live your best life. Keep the cameras away, but how do you feel about it? I feel like people like like want a black and white answer from me. Like they want when people ask me this, right? Like, would you do reality TV again? They just want like yes or no. But it really would just depend on what it is. Like I would be, I'd probably be so nitpicky about it that by the the end of like the discussions, they'd be like, God, you're exhausting. We don't even want you anymore. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yes, and I know that people like a black and white answer when it comes to this topic, but I so relate to what you just said. It's like, I don't want anybody disrupting what I have going on. Yeah. Do you, you have your name picked out for yeah. the boy. Yeah. Can you share with us the names you did not pick? Yeah. <laughs> I want to know the names that you didn't choose. Okay, the main one? Yeah. People are going to hate it. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> it can't be worse than Utah. Which is what I, I originally that. wanted. No, Lala, oh. when you said that to me, I'm like, get out. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> get your bucket hat and get out of my <laughs> fucking house. <laughs> Take your Jesus sandals, your bucket hat, and the name Utah. Get okay. the fuck out. You guys, the main one that I was going to name this boy yeah. was Loring. What? L-O-R-I-N-G. So basically what people call me, but with an ing on the end. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I am so offended. Luring. I Thank mean, God. I thought it was so fun. Mm-hmm. It's so bad, Stassi. What I can't f- lie to you. What the fuck? Okay, let's look at these other ones. He wouldn't have survived. Oh my God, school. these are so embarrassing. Okay, I didn't. Okay, Bo said no to every single one of these. So they weren't like properly, like, it's not like we were going to name him this. Like, Loring was literally the only one that we agreed on, except for this current name. I'm shocked that Bo would agree to that. Yeah, okay. Same. What's the next one? Because it's cool, okay? And you could call him Lore, and Lore's our favorite podcast to listen to, Bo and I. So I was like, that's cute. We can call him Lore. L-O-R-E. I don't like it. Fuck off. Okay. (laughs) You guys, these are bad. (laughs) I wrote Wolfram. (laughs) Wolfram? (laughs) That's so bad. Thoreau. Fox. F-A-W-K-E-S. I'm not mad at that. Um... Credence. Oh, you know what I really liked? Crescent. Not mad at that either. I thought Crescent was cool. Fox and Crescent, I'm not mad about. Okay. Clement. Nope. Oh my God, you know which one I was actually really hardcore thinking about? What? Aussie, O-S-S-I, because it rhymes with Stassi. (laughs) You should have just done (laughs) A-S-S-I. Or just, or Tossie. Oh my God, I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating for you. They're so bad. They're so bad. And then to think of the name that you chose, I'm like, thank God. And like, how was that even in the list of names, of names that were so bad? <laughs> I know, I know. Because Lala, this is the thing. There are so many popular names that I really love. Like, I love all the popular names, but I just don't want my kid to have the same name as everyone else. Oh, I actually really liked Easton, but I can't do it because I know one. Easton's super cute. It's a great name, but like, I, if I know one person, the name is off the list. I don't know one person who has the name of the baby that's coming next month. Me neither. Yeah. Me neither, bitch. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you my names because until I it's set in stone because then you're going to have to pretend to like it. I agree with that because the name that now we've chosen, yeah. when I do tell people the name, I'm like, if you don't like it, Lie keep, to me. Keep it to yourself. Because I love it and nothing's going to talk me out of it. So like, don't, yeah. Don't even try. Yeah. Okay, what's the my last question before I let you go? What is your biggest fear with this baby coming? Um, I think I've kind of already touched on that. The disrupting? Yeah, that it's just like. But like the birthing experience. Oh, no. Because you had a pretty easy labor with. Yeah. I yeah. did. So, like, I'm just, like, hoping. And everybody says that for the most part, your second labor is easier than the first. Really? So if I had it easy the first time, then I'm hoping. I think my worst fear, this is my worst fear. I'll tell you. Okay. This is it. The epidural is not going to kick in or it's not going to be right. Okay. And I'm going to feel everything. I always ask pregnant people this question and I'm like, but don't get dark. Like, obviously, our biggest fear is we oh, already of course. know, we but know I'm the, like, yes, no, like the no. surface lever biggest fear. Yours is that the epidural won't kick in because you hear about that or like your labor goes by so quickly that there was no time for it or yeah. something. I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing this without it. I'm not. I refuse. I refuse to. Yeah. Because mine kind of went out for a second. No way. During my labor. And oh, I was like, that. what is happening? What is happening? Like something like disconnected. So and it was very painful. No, but like, I don't understand like how, because well, you have to get fisted. Mm, that you know part's I mean? fun. <laughs> I'm gonna bomb. No, like literally, like I remember just like that, you know, like they literally like stick their whole hand to see how much you're dilated. Yeah, and they're shit. like, Whoop. and I can't do that. You're at about eight centimeters. It's disgusting. <laughs> I cannot do that unless I have. Well, that's because you're being fisted by your partner. I'm I'm not being fisted by my partner. Well, whatever. You get a dick inside of you. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to be having sex to get pregnant this round. No, I know. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. So fist away during the labor experience. Oh. I welcome you to do fisting? so. <laughs> so welcome. in order to like check to see how much you're dilated, they pretty much have to stick their whole entire hand up your vagina. I'm yeah. not joking. It's fun. I've never, yeah, I've, I don't think and, I ever. And then your doctor, I forgot about this part, has to like, Literally mas- massage, but like aggressively open your vagina when once you're ready to like actually start pushing. I remember our doctor, because we had the same one doing that. And I just, for- I'd like buried that and forgot about it. 
And now I'm remembering that all over again. Is, oh my gosh. This oh is just. My oh my hell. Oh. You're right. Yeah. I've, I've kind sure of blocked all of Durham. that yeah. out. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm just so excited for you and your life and where you're at. And I'm so grateful that I got to have you on the podcast today. Thank you. This was so fucking fun. Was it easy? Yes. I will literally come back anytime. I'm taking you up on that. No, like truly. Like, give me two months after I give birth. And then, like, I'll literally, let's do the damn thing. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you next week.